Hey friends, welcome back. So today we're gonna answer your questions about vinyl records, record players, and really just music in general. So let's dive in. I'm really interested in colored vinyl. What albums do you recommend for colored vinyl? Well, honestly, all the Vinylman records are really beautiful. And this isn't like a sponsored video or anything like that. It's just that their releases look great and are always on colored vinyl. So I'd recommend starting with them. They have a lot of great stuff. Will my Prince albums warp in the trunk of my car? I really hope not. I would definitely not recommend storing vinyl records in the trunk of your car for any length of time, especially as we're moving into the summer. If you just bought some records from your local shop and you're planning to drive straight home and you don't have room in either the front or the back seat, then putting them in the trunk for that very short period of time would probably be okay. But anything longer than that, and you run the risk of having your records warp, which is no fun. So always remember to keep your records away from sunlight, heat, and humidity, and you'll be just fine. What is the best metal album, in your opinion? Ooh, that's a hard question. I don't have a single best metal album, but I do really like Black Sabbath's Paranoid, Master of Reality, and of course their self-titled debut album from 1970. Now, as far as new metal goes, I really like Break the Cycle by Stained. I've been listening to that one a lot lately. I like Hybrid Theory, Meteora and Minutes to Midnight by Linkin Park, and pretty much anything Deftones, Rage Against the Machine, System of a Down, and Early Corn. And last of all, I also really love Tool's Lateralis. It's a classic, but it's also more of a prog rock feel. I recently bought the Audio-Technica LP60X as my first turntable. Do you think it's a good investment? Yes, it is. The LP60X is a great first turntable. It's actually the standard record player that I recommend all the time on the channel. And also, as I've made abundantly clear over the years, I'm not a fan of the suitcase style turntables like the Crosley Cruisers and the other ones that follow that similar design. But the LP60 and now the newer LP60X have always been great introductory turntables that get you into the world of record collecting. Now, what I like most about them is that they have a low price point, they're good quality, and they offer you a great value. So yes, I would definitely say that it's a good investment. What do you wish you knew when you first started playing and collecting records? Never be in a hurry when you're playing records. You know what I mean? So go slow because you could accidentally scratch a record or damage your stylus or something like that. So just basically slow down. I made that mistake when I was trying to play a record for a friend and I was in a hurry. So yeah, don't do that. Another thing is that you should only buy a record if you can see yourself playing it more than once. In the early days, I was buying up, you know, anything and everything, but now after several years, I'm a little more picky and more selective. And also, it's very important to know that if you want to play those older 10 inch 78 RPM shellac records, then you're gonna need a special stylus to do that. I tried playing a few of those types of records with my Audio-Technica cartridge, the AT95E, which came with my LP120 turntable, and I damaged that stylus of the cartridge because it's not meant to play those types of records. So keep that in mind. Another thing is that if the record you want hasn't been repressed in a while and it's going for like 250 bucks on eBay today, then, you know, just be patient, give it a few months, and check back, and if it has been repressed at that time, it might only cost you 25 bucks now. That actually happened to me with two Kings of Convenience albums. So thankfully, I just waited, and I didn't have to pay those higher prices. So as with a lot of things in life, a little patience goes a long way. What's your favorite vinyl or turntable accessory? I've always loved the Mobile Fidelity Sound Lab inner sleeves because they do a great job of protecting your records from getting scratched. And lately, I've been really liking the Boundless Audio record cleaning accessories. So right now, I have their anti-static brush, their record needle brush, 
and their cleaning solution, and they're all great. And they also have a matte gray finish, which looks pretty cool. Are 180 gram records better than regular records? Well, the main reason people like heavier records like 180 gram or 200 gram vinyl is because they are thicker and therefore less likely to warp. But that being said, it really all depends on the quality control at the factory where the records were pressed in the first place. So this is why companies like Mobile Fidelity Sound Lab and Music on Vinyl have such a great reputation among collectors because their quality control is excellent and they really care about getting it right. Is there any CD only album that you'd like to get your hands on as a vinyl release? Yes, I would really love to own Kem's albums, Chemistry, Album 2, and Intimacy, Album 3 on vinyl. Those are all great and definitely worth listening to, but right now, unfortunately, they're only available on CD. What sort of maintenance do you do on your records and equipment? The biggest maintenance related thing that I do is that I try to keep everything clean. So when I get a new record, I clean it off with a record brush and cleaning solution. Then I replace its paper inner sleeve with a higher quality MoFi inner sleeve. And then I also usually place the whole album jacket in an outer sleeve to protect it as well. And then when I'm right about to play that record, I'll pop it on the platter and give it a once over with an anti-static brush and that clears away any sort of lint or dust that might have fallen onto the record. And then after I've played a few records on the turntable, I'll also use a stylus brush to clean the record needle. So basically by keeping everything clean and dust free, your music is gonna sound better and your records will last you longer. What is your holy grail record? One that you really want or are really glad you own? I would really love to own the album I Could Live in Hope by Low, but it's really rare, and when you do see it online, it's usually pretty expensive. What is your favorite turntable cartridge of all time? Right now, I am loving my Ortofon 2M Black. The Nude Shibata Diamond Stylus is awesome, and it gives you a lot of detail because it hugs the record grooves really well. It is a fantastic cartridge. What is the best turntable around $450? If you're willing to go up another $50, I highly recommend this one, the Fluence RT85. Within its price range, it simply cannot be beat. I just recently upgraded to the LP60X and was wondering what type of speakers do you recommend to get? If you also have a receiver that you're plugging the LP60X into, then your most affordable option would be the Mica MB42 bookshelf speakers. Those were actually the first pair of speakers that I ever got, and their sound is pretty good for only 60 bucks. Now, if you'd rather have active speakers instead, then Mica does make the PB42X speakers, or if you're going for something more long-term, I'd recommend looking into the Klipsch R51 PM bookshelf speakers. So they are considerably more expensive, but when you factor in that their sound quality is much better, they're gonna last you forever because they've got great build quality and they have a built-in preamp and amplifier so you don't even need to buy a receiver, then you'll realize that they're actually a great value. Are records that come in box sets more at risk of being damaged because they are so tightly compressed in the box? I wouldn't worry about that too much because the most important thing is that the records themselves are standing up vertically and not sandwiched on top of each other horizontally. So basically, stand them, don't stack them, and you'll be just fine. Is collecting records a good investment or do they lose value? If you buy the right records, they actually do increase in value over time. It all depends on that individual record and how rare it is. So, for example, a few years ago from Mondo T's website, I pre-ordered their Silent Hill 2 original video game soundtrack on a double vinyl gatefold with one of the records being a white fog colored vinyl and the other one being a red and black swirl vinyl. Now I pre-ordered it at the time for like 25 bucks, but now, several years later, it's going for 
around $200 to $300. So if you find a special record and you pre-order it early, then you hold it for a few years and they don't repress it, then it could definitely be a good investment. Do some colored vinyl records use paint to color them? I've noticed on clear splattered vinyl that the splattering looks like paint. No, although it might look that way, they don't actually use paint for the splatter effect. Basically what it is, is that it's a clear vinyl record base with smaller colored vinyl pellets kind of sprinkled right on top. You know, like a donut. So these are two separate layers and then when they press them together in the record press, the layers combine and it gives us that splatter effect. I love that you have Dummy by Portishead on your wall. What version is that? Well, it's actually a reissue of the 1994 album pressed in 2014 by the exact same company, GoBeat, on a single 180 gram vinyl record. And it sounds great. Are there any music artists or genres that you simply could not get into? I don't really listen to country, rap, opera, polka, or death metal. What do you think of Mobile Fidelity Sound Lab? Do you think their older records are better than the new ones or vice versa? I think any record pressed by MoFi, whether new or old, is gonna be high quality. They really care about their releases. They're like the Criterion Collection, but for records. You know what I mean? So I think their records are only gonna get better with time. What is the best record cleaner or way to clean a record? From what I've seen, I think the best way to clean a record would be to go with a dedicated record cleaning machine like a VPI or something like that. But those are pretty expensive. So what I do is I just use some record cleaning solution from Boundless Audio and my chunky velvet cleaning brush from RCA. Overall, that does the job and it makes my records sound great. What happened to your Audio-Technica LP120 turntable? I still have it, it's actually in the other room, but lately I've really been loving this Fluence RT85, so I like to keep that one in this room. Do you have any Elton John records? And if you do, what are they? Currently, I don't own any Elton John records. In fact, there's a lot of classic music out there that I just simply don't have on vinyl. It's hard to get to everything. What is your favorite record box? I really like my Sade This Far vinyl record box set. I kind of wish it had more artwork and you know bonus features, so to speak, but overall, since y'all already know I'm a huge fan of Sade's work, it's still really nice to have all of her albums in one box. And I'm really looking forward to her next album, whenever that may be. Can you touch the dead wax? You can but since the dead wax is really close to the grooves of the last song on that side of the record, I'd recommend holding records by the sides or the label instead. So are we going to ignore the Ohm shirt or what? What Ohm shirt? Are you a fan of Radiohead? I haven't really listened to much Radiohead, but I really like their song, Creep. That one is a classic. As a person who lives in a country where temperatures are really high, what's the perfect temperature to store vinyl records? I'm kind of worried the records might warp over time, even if I'm storing them correctly. They say that the perfect temperature for storing records should be around 65 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit, or 18 to 21 degrees Celsius. But since I live in Texas and it gets pretty hot, I always keep the AC around 73 to 75, and that works just fine. So as long as you keep them inside with the AC going and away from sunlight and humidity, you should be fine. So basically what I'm saying is don't store them outside in the shed. That would be bad. Apart from vinyl records, what are your other hobbies? I also like watching movies and collecting Blu-rays and 4K Blu-rays, and I really love drinking loose leaf tea. How can you tell when it's time to change your stylus? The best way to check the condition of your stylus would probably be a small microscope like the Shure SEK2 Stylus Inspection Microscope. But since those are super rare and hard to find, your next best option would probably be a quality USB microscope 
or simply a powerful jeweler's magnifying loop, along with good lighting in order to see the detail of the stylus. Another much simpler way to know for sure when it's time to change your stylus is to just get a stylus timer and keep it next to your turntable and use it every time you play a record. So after a thousand hours of record playing time or 2000 hours if it's a higher quality stylus, then you should replace it. Also, if you're buying a used second-hand turntable, then you should always replace a stylus before playing any of your records. And also, if you play a record that you're familiar with and the sound quality sounds muffled or distorted and just not as precise as it should be, then that's another sign that you should replace your stylus. And finally, last of all, if you've aligned the cartridge properly and it's skipping or jumping out of the grooves, then that's also a sign to replace your stylus. When buying inner sleeves for your records, do you only recommend the Mobile Fidelity Sound Lab inner sleeves that are on Amazon? Love your videos, I'll try and get you that Fear Inoculum box set if you haven't bought it for yourself yet. First of all, thank you so much for watching my videos and especially for offering to send me that tool box set. It's pretty pricey, so you don't have to, but I appreciate the thought nonetheless. Now, as far as inner sleeves go, yes, I prefer the MoFi inner sleeves, but since they're so popular, they tend to go very fast on Amazon. So really, any soft plastic polyethylene inner sleeves are gonna work well and are gonna be miles better than the standard paper sleeves that come with most records. So two other brands that are also good are Invest in Vinyl and Big Fudge. Also, as a side note, I prefer the ones that are flat on the bottom versus the ones that are round bottom. But that's just my personal preference. What streaming service do you use? I had Pandora for a while. Uh, it was Pandora 1 and it was okay, but recently I switched to Apple Music and I really like it. I love that you can actually listen to entire albums start to finish instead of it being only like a radio station type of deal with Pandora. So what I usually do is I'll listen to albums on there and if I really like them, then I'll pick up the record. Do you collect 78 RPM shellac records? I only have like three 78s in my collection right now because I don't actually have a record needle that can play them. So I'm not collecting them right now, but I do think that they're very interesting and are definitely unique pieces of audio history. Sometimes one of my speakers suddenly drops in volume, then gradually increases back up to normal. It happens less when I clean my vinyl with the anti-static brush. Is it the static that makes that happen? It doesn't sound like static is the problem because if it was, you'd hear a bunch of clicks and pops when you play the record. So it could be either an issue with your receiver or with a particular speaker. So check all the connections in the back and make sure all the wires are firmly secured. And then if you still have that issue, maybe try a different pair of speakers so you'll know for sure if it's either you know the speakers or the receiver. It could be a defect from the factory. So overall, best of luck and I hope you get it sorted out. Does the amp you use matter? Also, what are some good speakers? Yes, the amplifier and preamp definitely matter when it comes to your overall sound. I've noticed a huge leap in sound quality ever since I added the Project TubeBox DS2 preamp to my vinyl audio setup. Now, whether you go with tube amps or solid state amps, either way, go with a trusted brand and your setup will thank you. Now, speaking of brands, as far as speakers go, I really love, as I've said, Klipsch. I found their sound to be natural, clear, and honestly, fun to listen to. So if you want passive speakers, I'd go for the Klipsch R15M or RP600M, and for active speakers, I'd go with the R51PM. How many CDs do you own? That's a great question. I actually just counted them for this video and I have a total of 267 CDs. Is Michael Jackson's Thriller in your collection? And is it an original pressing? I do have Thriller, but it's not an original pressing. It's actually a repressing from 2015 that I got at Amoeba in Hollywood 
and it sounds awesome. Why do all of my records skip at the very beginning, but are fine after a few seconds into track one? Now, Yavor also commented on this question right here and suggests it could be that your turntable isn't level. And I agree with that. If it's happening on every record that you play, then it sounds like your turntable might not be level. So you should definitely check that. And to help you do that, you can pick up a little bubble level online place it on your turntable's platter, and then you'll know 100% if it's either level or not. What do you think of the new Metallica turntable? Well, here's a picture of it right here, and I think it's a very interesting looking turntable, and it's kind of cool that Project teamed up with Metallica to make this turntable. But considering it has a price tag of $1,600, I don't think it's worth it. I would rather go with a Fluence RT85 for only $500 and save the rest for a nice receiver and a great pair of speakers. Do you prefer vintage or new vinyl? What do you think are the advantages of each? I prefer newer records because they're not as beat up as the majority of stuff you're gonna find in the bargain bin sections of your local record shop. But that being said, if you find a vintage record of your favorite band on eBay or Discogs and it's been well cared for by a collector that stored it properly, then that one is gonna be a lot better. So it really depends on the condition of the record, but overall I tend to go for newer releases. What's the rarest record or box set that you own? Probably my copy of the Parlor Tricks album a blessed unrest on black and gold colored vinyl. I was so happy when Meredith Yayanas from the band mailed it out to me and even signed it herself. So that record is super rare. I couldn't find it anywhere online and it's also quite special to me. I've noticed some records increase exponentially in price. What makes a record go up in price? How can you know what vinyl to invest in and when to sell? The biggest thing that causes records to increase in value is how rare they are. So for example, if an album or soundtrack was released on a limited edition colored vinyl on record store day a few years back and they never pressed it again, then odds are good that that particular record is gonna fetch a higher price. So if you own that record and you hold onto it for a few years, then you might be able to sell it for a good profit. But that being said, as I mentioned earlier, if the record label decides to repress it tomorrow for only 25 bucks, then obviously people are gonna go for that one and you're gonna lose money. So it really depends. But overall, great quality records from companies like Mobile Fidelity Sound Lab, Music on Vinyl, and Mondo Tees are all gonna be a good investment. Do you think cassettes will make a comeback on the same scale as vinyl? I love cassettes, I really do. But honestly, I don't think they're gonna make a comeback like what we've seen with vinyl. And I think the biggest reason for that is the sound quality of cassettes. Even if you had a Nakamichi Dragon and you played a high quality cassette on Type 2 chrome tape, even with all that, the record of that same album will sound better especially if you have a great setup. Now, cassettes are kind of cute, and they do have that warm analog sound and a great low end, but overall, I see cassettes as kind of like the snack, and the record is like the full course meal. You know what I mean? Now, it would help the format if someone made a new high quality portable cassette player or a cassette deck in the near future to play tapes, but overall, even if that did happen, I don't see this format growing to the extent that vinyl has. But then again, who knows? What's your opinion on comedy albums like Monty Python or stand-up comedy like George Carlin? I would love to own some stand-up comedy on vinyl. Currently, I don't have anything like that in my collection, but I'd love to own anything on vinyl from like George Carlin, Richard Pryor, Robin Williams, Bill Burr, or Norm MacDonald, that would be awesome. What's the most extreme album in your collection? 
probably Ohm's album add Vedic songs on a double LP gatefold with the record spinning at 45 RPM. It's a very heavy doom rock album and it is awesome. My favorite song on it is State of Non-Return. If you haven't heard that song and you're a fan of the doom rock genre, you should definitely check it out. It's really great. You mentioned Mobile Fidelity Sound Lab has an ultra disc one step option for records. How does the sound quality differ? Also, do you think audio quality will get higher on records in the future? As I've said before many times in this video, Mobile Fidelity Sound Lab is a brand that a lot of audiophiles trust because they really care about sound quality and they have impeccable attention to detail as it relates to that sound quality. So specifically when it comes to their UltraDisc one step technology, most companies use three steps to press a record. But as their name implies, they only use one. Now you wouldn't think that would make that much of a difference, but apparently according to this page on their website, which was written by their engineers who are a lot smarter than me, that one step makes all the difference when it comes to sound. So I'll post that link down below so you can check it out for yourself and read all the sciencey stuff behind it. But regardless, it is pretty cool that MoFi cares so deeply about having the best sound possible. And overall, I do think that record technology will continue to improve and records, cartridges, speakers, and amplifiers will sound even better in the future. Do you think vinyl is worth getting into as a teenager who has always collected CDs? What advantages does it have over CDs? CDs are great, and like I mentioned earlier, I own quite a few. If your car still has a CD player like mine does, then they're a lot of fun to play when you're out, you know, driving around. However, when you get back home, it's a nice little ritual to relax at the end of a long day by you know, putting on a record and watching it spin on your turntable. You're basically really engaged with the music. You know what I mean? You're listening to every nuance, the surface noise, the occasional crackle or pop. It's all part of the experience. For one thing, records are physically bigger than CDs, so therefore their artwork is also going to be bigger. So you'll be able to see the album covers on a larger canvas you can build a little record wall, like this one, and you can switch the records around whenever you want, and you can also hold the jacket while the record is spinning and read the track list and the liner notes, and when you're all done, you can store that record inside one of those IKEA collax shelves, which are perfect for 12-inch records. So, yeah, you could do all this with CDs too, but you won't get that warm analog sound. And also, if you scratch a CD, it will skip just forever. But if you scratch a record, it'll still play. You'll just hear a little pop when it spins around. Now, all this being said, the choice is really up to you, but overall, I do feel that it's good to own physical media in any shape or form versus just streaming alone. Streaming is convenient, but you're really just renting the music. Whereas with physical, you actually own the music, and I like that. If I have to make the choice between the Audio-Technica LP60 and the Denon DP29F, which one should I choose? In many ways, they're both pretty comparable. However, since I'm partial to Audio-Technica, and since the LP60X, which is the newer version, is a bit cheaper than the Denon, I would go with the Audio-Technica. What do you recommend to clean and refurbish secondhand and very dusty records? I would recommend first using a flat brush like this one to scrape off all the heaviest dust and dirt on the surface of the record. Then I would use this record cleaning solution from Boundless Audio and this chunky velvet RCA record cleaning brush to remove the rest of the dust and dirt that could be trapped inside the grooves. And last of all, right before you drop the needle, be sure to use an anti-static brush over the surface of the record before you play it. And if you do all that, then you should be good to go. How did your Carpenter's box set come out in terms of quality control? I'm looking to buy the same box set soon. The sound quality on the box set is really good. 
You can hear every little detail of the instruments and especially Karen Carpenter's angelic voice. So if you pick up the box set, you're gonna absolutely love it. Does colored vinyl sound better or worse than black vinyl? This is a great question. So basically all records are made from the same stuff, plastic PVC pellets. So if they're black pellets, it becomes a black record. If they're red pellets, it becomes a red record and so on. Now, according to a few sources online, apparently the black pellets do strengthen the overall record, which improves the sound and the other colors don't. So a lot of audiophiles only prefer black, but I would argue that plenty of other factors are just as important when determining the sound quality of a record. What microphones did they use to record the album with? What were the acoustics in the room when they recorded that album? Did they use compression when they were mixing and mastering the album? If so, how much compression did they use? How did they master the record? What was the quality control like at the factory where they pressed the record? How many copies did they press? All of this kind of stuff influences how the end result is gonna sound. So technically, Black vinyl is gonna be a fraction better on paper, but as I've said, a lot of other things should be considered as well. Are slip mats worth it? If you don't have an acrylic platter, then yes, you're definitely gonna need some form of a slip mat. Now, the standard mats that come with most turntables are the felt mats, and those are okay. You know, those are totally fine, but if you really wanna have a better sound, then you should go with either a rubber mat or a cork mat. And if you have an acrylic platter, like this Fluence RT85, then you don't need a mat at all and you can just place your records directly on top of the acrylic. Do records make good Frisbees? I wouldn't recommend it. Okay, so those are all the questions about records and record players that I was able to get to today. But if you have a question that we didn't answer in this video, post it down below so we can make more of these videos. It was a lot of fun. All right, now before we go, today's song of the day is I Ran So Far Away by A Flock of Seagulls. And if you have a suggestion for a song of the day as well, post it in the comments down below and you might see it in a future video. Okay, now what do you think about the topics we brought up today? Let me know down in the comments below, and if you love record players and record collecting as much as I do, then feel free to subscribe to the channel and smack the little bell notification down there so you won't miss out on any new videos. And most importantly of all, have a fantastic day, stay safe, and keep spinning that vinyl.